Welcome to the presentation of my final project, a digital lesson plan for Hatchet using Canvas. The learning challenge I explored is reading and responding to the novel Hatchet for my sixth grade ELA students. Some are hybrid, but most are 100% virtual. Students read the novel Hatchet by Gary Paulson as part of the sixth grade English language arts curriculum. Students will respond to what they read in a response journal. They will also collaborate with classmates for comprehension activities. Summative and formative assessments will be used. And what's great is I can still address the PA course standards for English language arts, even though this is you know, an online digital activity instead of done on paper traditionally. And the way I changed it was using the SAMR model. SAMR stands for Substitution, Augmentation, Modification, and Redefinition. This image is from the Stony Brook School of Medicine. And I thought this was a very simple way to understand SAMR with how you keep doing things to change the coffee until you end up with something totally different, like pumpkin spice. So here is my Canvas course. This is my home page. Here's my Bitmoji classroom we all made uh, back in the summer. And then when I go to my modules page, it's set up like this. I'm trying to keep it similar to my Google Classroom. And then I have this emoji key at the top. One of the organization things I really liked and has been successful is using emojis when possible for like a tag. So it helps kids know what to expect. Like if they see the puzzle piece, they know it's going to be an ad puzzle. It also helps me find things when I'm scrolling through the Google Classroom. If I know I'm looking for, you know, a pear deck, my eyes just looking for the pear. So that will stay there at the top. And then I will use it with the activities when it's possible. So for the pre-reading activity, so here's the thing link. Uh, and I tell them what's in it. There's three required things. So like these three, they have to do. They have to do these three yellow ones. Two are an ad puzzle. One, oh, uh, one's about camping. It's a Google form about camping, just to activate their prior knowledge. And the other ones are optional. There's two interviews with Gary Paulson. This is a video about the Newberry Medal. And this is a question and answer interview with Gary Paulson. So one of the things I like to use is Edpuzzle. Uh, before, I would show these things, videos on the smart board in the classroom. And we would just talk about a whole group. I would interrupt them all the time, asking questions or saying, did you notice that? But Edpuzzle is nice. I would say it's an example of modification because you can add questions in the video uh, students have to answer before they move on. They can rewatch. They watch it at their own pace. You can put in feedback with the question so they know right away if they got it correct or not. And it's a great resource and they seem to like it. And I love it. Then while we're reading, we're going to read our journal, which I use my notes that I had from the last time we read Hatchet to create a double entry journal. This is gonna be their example of what's a double entry journal. It's in a Google slide deck. So they can chapter, so they can still write what's the thing from the text. And in this case, I'm telling them I want them to look at an ocean of trees. And then we're gonna write, so what's that metaphor telling me? And then it goes through each chapter. I would say this is pretty much just straight substitution because this is exactly what it would look like in the in their marble copy book. And even writing a summary at the end, writing a review, like how did you feel about it, a uh, plot diagram, that's exactly the same. So this is a straight substitution activity. Uh, the first group activity we do is this plane crash activity, which is just, you know, a PDF piece of paper, they work together, they fill it out, and then we share in the class. 
I didn't want to just upload a PDF. I thought that would be boring and not nearly as engaging as it could be. So I made a Jamboard. And these are the five things that are in the PDF of the things that Brian has on him after he crashes. And I thought well, we could do it here. And they would just add a post-it note, um, what the hatchet he can cut down trees. And they can put them with it so instead of writing on paper, they're using the post, using the Jamboard features to brainstorm what can Brian do with all of these things. So in this case, this might just be augmentation because I already put in the um, images. But when you go to the other activity like that, their survival pack activity, This one will be more of modification because in this activity, they have to brainstorm what they're going to, what they think will be in the survival pack. And then they have to import the image. Tell the, tell me what the image is or tell me what the item is, import the image and then type their reason. And I set it up this way just so that they can see, they can put two things on a, on a, board i guess it's called and they know how to go here and add it so they could change it to if item number five is um, a flare gun they can just go like that and change it and then they would edit this one give a reason why do they think a flare gun would be in there what's next so those are all things oh i did add a this is something new so I added a discussion question uh, that would be after the plane crash activity, what would you do? And I set it up so that when they type their answer, they can't see anybody else's answer until they type their own answer. So I thought that's a little bit different. So they can't be influenced by what anybody else says, which sometimes happens in class when you share in person. So I thought that would be a neat feature to try out and hopefully would increase engagement because they'll have to go and read what everybody else said and hopefully that will inspire them to be like, oh, I agree with you. Um, or you know someone's gonna say, call for help on my cell phone. So it's hopefully ki other kids will point out, it's 1986, there were no cell phones. <laughs> um, post read, I'm gonna come back to this new Brian, old Brian at the end, cause I need help with that. Some post reading activities, uh, Kahoot questions. They love Kahoot. And there's two ways to do it. They can work in groups, which I've done before. They create the questions and I make the Kahoot, which is probably just substitution because they could write the questions on paper. It just makes it easier for me if they type it because then I just copy and paste everything into the Kahoot. But if they would create the Kahoot from scratch, like if they created all the questions and then chose the time, allow, allowed time for the question, point values, cover image, posted it so that other people can play it. That would probably be redefinition because it wouldn't be possible without the Kahoot website allowing them to make the game. And then that it's interactive with people all around the world could play it. So there's two choices for that. Um, we're going to do a storyboard that timeline, which is something new for me. They use it a lot in the older grades. So that's something we would have both have to learn how to do. I did create an example. Uh, and I was thinking of maybe they would work in groups and each group would get a chapter. Because there's 19 chapters. And this is like maybe one chapter, two, maybe. <laughs> Uh, so it could get very long. So I thought I mean, if they did parts and then we could put it all together. But it's you can choose the background, you choose the character, you can I picked out his clothes. Um, they said he has brown hair, so I gave him brown hair. This image was my interpretation of 
the first night he's there, he gets eaten alive by mosquitoes. So they can be very creative with their showing what happened in the story instead of just always writing about it. So that's something new I want to try that everybody would do. And then for the final project, um, I wanted to do something like multimedia. And I wanted something where they could have choices. That's why I only put the red pin next to the final project because they'll freak out and think they have to do all of them. These are the choices, but one final project. And I modified a rubric I had created for multimedia course and made sure that it would work with all of these classes. So the rubric is already in Canvas so that they would be able to access it at any time. And it would work for any of the projects that they would create a co-spaces environment. They could create their own thing link project, either about the book or something that they learned, like maybe survival tips, or they want to teach about the animals, a book widget, a timeline project, and a choose your own adventure project, which is like a Google slide. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but if someone wanted to try it, we would figure it out. I know the library knows how to do it. And then the ABC book project, we did something similar to that um, for another project, brainstorm a list of words that have to do with the book. And then I gave them the slides for this. I could do it again, or they could just make their own, probably they should make their own, do it however they want to create. Um, they have to pick the letter and then write a paragraph and then make a book. It's like they're making a picture book, but it's it's digital. And I think it would be neat if they would read it and like make it a video, make a video presentation of their book. So I think that was everything. Yes. Now, what I need help with is this new brain versus old brain. This is an activity we do on paper and the kids somewhat, they work in groups. Someone lays on a piece of butcher paper and they trace them. Then they draw a line down the middle and one side is old Brian and one side is new Brian. Because there's about, I think it's chapter 13, 12 or 13. Uh, Brian realizes he's not gonna be rescued and he tries to kill himself. And the next morning he wakes up, he's ashamed and also determined to survive. And so he talks about how he used to be and how he is now. And he talks a lot about having hope and first, lots of firsts. So this is kind of what it looks like on paper, except they would be drawing. And I need some suggestions for an idea of how to make this a digital project besides just draw a drawing app or drawing on paper and uploading a photo. Uh, the only, what did I think of? I thought if I knew more about coding, maybe it would be appropriate for like a scratch activity or I don't know if there's a way to use Padlet or somebody knows something else, like a, would a mind map activity work for this? Just something more creative, engaging, the, but that would be digital, but still get the same idea of old Brian versus new Brian. If you have any ideas, please send them to me. I would really appreciate it. And thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I can't wait to try this with my students in the fourth marking period. Thank you.